everybody understands space and time. You learn about that at kindergarten. It's really the, the first physics anybody ever learns, right? Mm -hmm. So it's, it seems really odd that that should still be very mysterious to physicists. Because the universe is expanding, time itself is in some sense elastic. So if you go backwards in time, the universe becomes denser and hotter, and therefore things happen faster. So even though the people say the universe is 14 billion years old, it's actually much older because a second very early on encompasses an enormous number of things. But it's also a question of what happens at a very small period of time at a very, very small scale. For example, how does a drop that's falling hit a flat surface and then splash? So this is a kind of a symmetry of nature where you can look at time dilation or spatial dilation. These events organize themselves temporally, and then they begin to say something. So, ba 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 bum is what you might think of as a musical event, a, a very pregnant musical event that contains a lot of potential implications. So, ba 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 bum becomes ba 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 sort of moving it along, moving time along, moving the whole symphonic statement along until finally we get ba 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 dum bum where ba 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 is yet another iteration bum bum and we're into a new key area. I think that one way that you can look at the passage of time is to look at what was tolerated even celebrated at one point becomes problematic and then becomes absolutely forbidden, like slavery, and that's usually the direction it goes. And it's gone. There's no way that I can turn back time to get this thing to come back to where it started. Okay, but as a physicist, I'm infinitely powerful, so I can turn time around. The laws of physics are time reversal invariant. The future can also affect the past, in fact. There's nothing in the laws that says this cannot be true. So the direction of causality, in some sense, is not fixed. It's very hard, isn't it, to think other than linear terms on the moral scale, so to speak. With the example of slavery, you say, ah, about time. With something like National Socialism, we say, how could this possibly have been done? It's just a remarkable fact that something can start swelling and keep growing until it seems to be out of control. The frequency of this disk rotating on this table was trying to go to infinity and it would reach there and find a time except nature came in and cut that singularity off. The expansion of the universe is getting faster with time. It's speeding up. It's as if gravity is repulsive. The dark energy is the cause of cosmic acceleration. The universe is dominated by dark matter and dark energy, which basically make up more than 95% of the mass energy content of the universe. So most of what the universe is made of is a complete mystery curve. So we're doing an experiment at a Fermilab. We've just finished building the world's largest camera by weight. And it's now in Chile. And the idea is that, of course, you can't take pictures of dark energy, but you can take pictures of half a billion galaxies and map out how they move over the course of time. And that new precise data is going to tell us maybe how dark energy works. So how we play with time is we managed to actually put the entire universe in a supercomputer and start it at a very early stage and run it forward. You know, we could put different kinds of dark matter in there. We could put more ordinary matter, less dark matter. If you believe in God, God is the creator of time. There's a kind of sacral history from the creation of Adam and Eve to the eschaton when Christ comes again to claim his kingdom. Now Machiavelli comes along and revives the ancient, the pagan, the antique way of thinking about time, which is cyclical, so that things come around again, you know, endlessly. So I think this is a great privilege. It's a kind of that you can actually build your own universe. And you know, every few weeks we can say, well, I didn't like the last one and I build a new one. In quantum mechanics, we know experimentally, nothing ever happens at a definite time or place. So what does it even mean to have time if you can't measure 
where something happens. We work harder and harder and harder and harder to get closer and closer to the point of breakup, but couldn't get there because we would always be approaching that point of breakup because things are getting infinite in that time. But there is never an absolute agreement between what is notated and what is sounded. There can't be. Nobody would want it. It's not like you have little markers in space or little markers in time that say when things happen. You can only measure things that relate things to other things. And traditionally that's been true for jazz. Everybody sings it differently, you know. Everybody has this X amount behind the beat, but not just that, falling a certain amount or bending the pitch a certain amount. The dynamics happens at this very incredibly small scale, but when you look at that at this very small scale, it looks incredibly beautiful at the same time. It's not just a scientific interest, but it also has aesthetic qualities as well. An alternative is that time is the space that we're allotted on this earth to accomplish certain human projects. There's just one universe. Everything's talking about everything else. They've got to relate to each other somehow. You know, many years in the future, people will look back at what we're doing and then say, these people thought they were playing with time, but they had no idea what they were doing, <laughs> right?